Now for the latest uh, on the investigation into Alaska Airlines, uh, it was flight 1282, that in your brain, and the subsequent grounding uh, of some Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes. Let's bring in former NTSB uh, in in investigator Greg Feith. And thank God, Greg, it's not going to be a number that's etched into uh, our brains. Like some, I, There are some from the past that we do remember. We do remember those numbers. And it, it could have been. And I don't understand why we get to the point where we change protocol on something that seems like it was kind of obvious. Maybe it's just hindsight in 2020, uh, but it, it seems like you could have checked this stuff out better. Joe, that's one of the big issues with uh, Boeing recently, with all other quality control issues. Here is another black eye against the 737 MAX aircraft. And given the fact that the lessons that we learned from the MCAS events, of course, the scrutiny that the 737 has been under, the spotlight that uh, Boeing has been under, you would think that this would be an airplane that has zero issues. And unfortunately, they keep coming back with the rudder event the a uh, couple of months ago, uh, some elevator rivet issues uh, and engine cowling issues. You would think that uh, the quality control, they would have reset, Boeing would have reset, you know, their safety protocols, if you will, and, and really enhanced their quality control checks. I wonder how many different uh, parts of the plane that you could group into uh, things that needed to be checked. The MCAS, I, I, I characterize that as like almost a software or a procedural uh, a checklist that you do. How many of, of things like this are we talking about? I mean, you talk about the fuselage and the integrity of that. You mentioned the rudders. So there's bolts on the elevators. There must, are there still cables? Remember when we had a problem with a <laughs> Uh, a yeah. piece went into the cable. Do they? Or they don't have those anymore, do they? Well, some of the older, even though this is a variant, there are cables still in the airplane. Some are totally electronic. Um, but th the fact is, is that with all of the moving parts on an aircraft, yes, they're magnificent machines, and and the workmanship and and the craftsmanship and engineering that goes into them are fantastic. These are the little things. These are the human things where you have humans interacting with a machine. And, of course, any kind of human interaction, you always are setting yourself up for these types of things. That is, these quality control issues. Somebody has to turn that bolt, torque that bolt, make sure that there's a cotter pin um, behind that nut or in that nut. So when you look at all of these things, yeah, these small things can cause catastrophic events. And in this case, we're fortunate that this airplane was only at 16,000 feet because we would have had a different scenario had this airplane been at 35,000 feet. And when, when the worst case scenario does play out, a lot of times we look back and we, we find similar things. So in this case, it didn't, but there will be a next time. And, and we know that. I'm, I'm wondering, if you were running Boeing, if you were Dave Calhoun, how would you... How do you go down the line of command to make sure that, that people are doing things like that? And I guess you'd have to, there would be man hours spent or worker hours spent. Jeez, I mean, I'm so PC now, I can't say man hours. But there would be worker hours spent, and that adds to, that hurts margins. The, the more inspecting and safety, uh, the more time you spend on that and you have your employees spending on that, the less money you make. So the, the, the whole profit uh, incentive comes into play. Yeah, well, you, you can pay me now or pay me later because I'd rather spend the money now on safety than have to pay for an accident. And un unfortunately, Boeing has learned some very hard lessons with Lion Air and Ethiopia. So the fact is, if I was running the company, I would put together a team an advisory team consisting of ex-Boeing employees, people that have been down on the floor, whether they're supervisors or actually technicians who build the aircraft. You need to have people on the ground who are listening to try and understand what are the issues, what are the problems that are going on on the manufacturing floor. That information has to filter up to the C-suite, and they have to act on it. Given the fact that now the headquarters is well displaced from where they actually manufacture the aircraft, who knows where the brakes in command are and that chain of communication? That's the huge issue. And they've lost a lot of talent. 
um, from Boeing, whether it's downsizing or uh, programs have, have terminated. Look, the 747 program is over. So where is all that talent, all that experience? Did they reassign those folks or do those ple people get uh, riffed out? That is a reduction in workforce. But I would put an advisory team together um, to have communication, direct line communication all the way to the top. Look, this is, this is a problem that's been ongoing. This is not a one-off and they should have learned lessons by now. And then of course, where are the shareholders? Why are they not really pushing top management to, uh, to really understand what's going on. We're yelling at the board for being, you know, sort of, I don't know, in, in you know, the, we, we hear about boards all the time that sometimes they just, whatever the CEO says, they just nod. And I, I, I don't know. I, he was on the board before that. I, yes, I'm trying to figure out what, what you'd need to do to inspect every bolt. On, on, on a, and then I'm thinking, you'd like to do it on 30 year old. You'd like to focus on the, the planes that have been in service for a long. If you got to inspect every bolt on a three month old plane, I mean, how long does, does that take? And then you know what you do? You, you inspect the bolts on the most recent thing that happened. You're OK, let's look at these bolts on the on the uh, the plug for the fuselage. And the next thing's going to be somewhere else. So you got to do the whole plane. Well, I mean, that is part of the build process. They have come up with a process for manufacturing that aircraft. And yes, every bolt is inspected. Now, some are what's called RII, which is a required um, inspection item. That requires additional inspections. Others, once they're in place, once they're installed, it's really install and forget. And that, unfortunately, is what has happened with this door plug because of the construction and, of course, the assembly procedure for these bolts. If they are installed correctly, you won't have this issue. And that's why I think through the inspection, uh, okay. once, the, once the bolts are inspected, it's going to be, yes, the, the FAA is probably going to require a repetitive inspection just to confirm everything's been done. But, but the entire airplane is inspected, Joe.